Okay, we are starting completing the square worksheet. All right, completing the square. It's a, a very specific technique. All right, so let's see. I want to take half of the B value, so half of 4, right, half of 4 is 2, we have to square it, 2 squared is 4. Okay, a couple little notes, right, when I take half of the B value, and I get 2, this is a very important value. This value is going to show up here in a minute. All right, after I square it, when I get 4, I have to add 4 to both sides. So I'm going to get x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to 10 plus 4, which is 14. Okay, this part right here, was slightly irrelevant. I only rewrote it just so I could show you this next part. <clears throat> this trinomial is guaranteed to factor into, right, I'm going to split into two factors. What are the factors? It's going to be this value here. This is positive 2, so positive 2, right. This value shows up here every time, every time. And this is equal to 14. Solve by taking the square root. That part's going to always happen as well. So x plus 2 equals plus or minus root 14. Is 14 simplifiable? Or can we reduce it? 2 times 7? No, they're both prime, so no change here. So minus 2 from both sides. My answer. Final answer is going to be go on the sign. X equals negative two plus or minus root fourteen. Okay, number two. X squared plus six x minus three is equal to zero. We want to solve this. Again by completing the square. All of these are going to be completing the square actually. So half of the b value. That's going to be 3. All right. It's a very important value, right? It's a very important value. When I square 3, I get 9. So I have to add 9 to both sides. Okay. So kind of glazed over a step here. But starting off, it would be best to add 3 to both sides first. Okay, so let's do this. So I, I don't want to combine these two only because it's going to mess up the, like, because this 9 is very specific. That 9 has to be there. That's what's going to make it um, factor into its, you know, factored form. This 3 needs to move away. So x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals, I'm adding 3 to both sides, so 3 plus 9 which is basically 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, this, like I said, is guaranteed to factor whatever this value is here. It's a positive number, so it's a positive 3 squared. <clears throat> Take a square root of both sides. I'm going to get x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus root 12. Root 12 is actually 3 times 4. Right, and 4 is a perfect square. That can come out as a 2. So 2 root 3. Right, because this is really 2 times 2 and the pairs can leave. 
Okay, subtract 3. So final answer is going to be x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 2 root 3. Number 3, x squared minus 18x plus 86 equals 0. All right, step 1, I'm going to subtract this. So x squared, 18x, equals negative 86. <clears throat> All right, half of negative 18 this time. So negative 18, half of it is going to be negative 9. All right. Square it. So negative times negative is a positive. 9 times 9 is 81. This is the... 81 is the value that I'm adding to both sides. Okay. This piece here, guaranteed to factor into whatever this value is here. Eighty-six plus eighty-one, it's one sixty-seven. Okay, square root of both sides, I'm going to get x minus 9 is equal to plus or minus square root of 167. Is 167 a perfect square? That's the question. Well, it's not, I don't think, because 169 is 13 times 13. So I don't think it's going to work, but let's just see. I do have my calculator handy. No, it's not. Mm, okay, so let's do it like this. Plus 9, plus 9. I'm just, I'm just double checking this in my head real quick. Can we bring out 9? No, I think this is a prime number. Okay, so our final answer, 9 plus or minus square root of 167. All right, number 4. 2k squared plus 6k equals negative 12. All right, it's already on this side. Both my variables are on the left. However, look what's happening here. Uh, the value in front of the squared value, the leading term, is not 1. I need this to be 1. It's the only way it's going to work out. So if I divide both sides by 2, I divide everything by 2, I'm going to get k squared, 3k, negative 6. Now it's 1. Now I can complete the square. Okay, so take half of the b value. Well, and half of three, like right, three and a half. This is actually going to be, this is actually the value that's going to show up later. All right, if I square it, I'm going to get square the top, square the bottom, nine over four. That's why I need to add to both sides. Okay, this piece here, guaranteed, right? K plus 3 halves, because right, this value goes here, is equal to whatever negative 6 plus 9 fourths is. So let's think about that for a moment. Negative 6, take away 9 fourths, or negative 6 added to 9 fourths, right? 9 over 4. I need a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 4. So this is going to be 24 minus 9, 15, negative 15 fourths. Take a square root of both sides. All right, k plus 3 halves equals plus or minus. All right, a couple things are going to happen here. 
there's a negative inside of the square root. That's going to come out as i. Then I take the square root of the top, square root of the bottom. So square root of 15 over the square root of 4, which is 2. Last step. I'm going to subtract 3 halves from both sides. So k equals negative 3 halves plus or minus root 15 over, over 2i. 15 can't be simplified because it's 3 times 5. It's already, it's already simple. 4x squared minus 40x minus 12 is equal to 0. A um, couple things. I'm going to add 12 to both sides. Okay, the value in front of the leading term is not 1, so I have to divide everything by whatever that value is. So x squared, this is 1, right? Okay, 40 divided by 4, negative 10 x, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Okay, half of the b value, so half of negative 10 is negative 5. I square it, positive 25. So I add 25 to both sides. I'm going to get right this factors into x minus 5. Right, Whatever this value is, when I take half of it, that always goes here. Squared equals... 25 plus 3, which is 28. Okay, this is, take a square root of both sides. This is going to be x minus 5 equals plus or minus square root of 28. Okay, so 28 is 14 times 2. 14 is 7 times 7, so I can pull a 7 out. No, I'll take that back. That's not 7 times 7. 7 times 2. This is 7 times 2. I can pull a 2 out. So 2 root 7. Add 5 to both sides. So final answer is going to be x equals 5 plus or minus 2 root 7. All right, first thing I notice, this is not 1. So I have to divide everything by 7. t squared, 20 divided by 7 is 4t. This is going to be 8 equals 0. OK, I'm going to move the 8 over by subtracting it. All right, now I take half of the b value here. So half of 4 is 2. All right, that's an important value. Square it, 2 times 2 is 4. So I have to add 4 to both sides. It's kind of convenient. All right, this is going to factor into t, whatever this value is here, so positive 2 squared equals negative 4, negative 8 plus 4, which is negative 4. Okay, take the square root of both sides. I'm already noticing the negatives inside, so i is going to have to come out at some point. So t plus 2 is equal to plus or minus i square root of 4 is going to be 2. Final answer, or oh, actually minus 2. So t is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2i. 3s squared plus 6s plus 9. First thing I notice, this is not 1. 
So I have to divide everything by that number, which is 3. Cancels. So s squared plus 2s plus 9 equals 0. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Okay, I'm going to subtract 3. Technically, let's do it like this. I'm subtracting 3 from both sides. Take half of 2. That's going to be 1. Right, that's an important value. I square it. I get 1. 1 squared is 1. I have to add 1 to both sides. Okay, again, this guaranteed to factor into S whatever this value is here, so positive 1 plus 1 squared equals 1. Actually, negative 3 plus 1, negative 2. Okay, I need to get to the S, so I have to square root both sides, plus or minus, because I brought the square root to the table. Thinking ahead, I see there's a negative, so I is going to come out. S plus 1 is equal to plus or minus square root of 2 i. Subtract 1 from both sides. S is equal to negative 1 plus or minus root 2 i. Okay, 6r squared plus 6r plus 12 equals 0. Not 1. So I have to divide by 6. So r squared plus 6 divided by 6 is 1. 1r. One Do I need to write the 1? Not necessarily. And this is going to be plus 2 is equal to 0. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So r squared plus r is equal to negative 2. Okay, I'm going to take half of 1, 1 half, so this is my important value. I'm going to square it. This is going to be square the top, square the bottom, so 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. This is the number that I got to add to both sides. Okay. This trinomial, guaranteed, I say that every time, but it's guaranteed, r, whatever this value is, so positive 1 half squared, equals whatever negative 2 minus a quarter. So negative 2 minus a quarter, it's 1 and 3 quarters, negative 1 and 3 quarters, right, negative 1 and 3 quarters. So 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7, so negative 7 fourths. Take a square root of both sides. So r plus 1 half equals, it's a negative inside, so i is going to come out. So plus or minus the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. So root 7 square root of 4 is going to be 2. Okay, minus 1 half, minus 1 half, r is equal, negative 1 half, plus or minus, root 7 over 2, i. Okay, number 9, x squared plus 9x plus 20 equals 0. So here's a 1. That's good. I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. So this is going to be, let's do it like this. I subtracted 20 from both sides. Take half of 9. Square it. Well, when I take half of 9, that's my important value. 
9 over 2. It doesn't reduce cleanly, so just 9 over 2. When I square it, square the top, square the bottom, 81 over 4. This is the number I add to both sides. So 81 over 4 plus 81 over 4. Okay. Guaranteed the factor, right? X, whatever this number is, positive 9 halves squared is equal to the sum of these two numbers. So negative 20, I need a common denominator, which is going to be 4. 4 times 20, 2, 4, 6, 8. So negative 80 over 4 plus 81 over 4. That's, that's actually kind of nice. Because this is going to be what? One-fourth. So one-fourth. Square root of both sides. Plus or minus. So x plus 9 halves equals plus or minus. Square root of the top, square root of the bottom. So square root of 1 is 1 over root 4, which is 2. This is nice because minus 9 halves minus 9 halves. So x is going to equal negative 9 halves plus or minus a half. So negative 9 plus 1 would be negative 8 halves. And then negative 9 minus 1 or negative 9 minus 1 would be negative 10 over 2. Right, because they have the same denominator, they're common. So I can just add or subtract the top. So this is going to be x is equal to negative 4, right? Negative 8 divided by 2, or negative 5. Okay, so 1, so we're good. Got to take half of 3. That is the important value. I square it. I'm going to get square the top, square the bottom. So 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. This is the number i got to add to both sides. OK, a little inconsistent here, but that's fine. This, net, this 14 has to move over. So x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourths equals, I'm subtracting 14, but adding 9 fourths. All right. Trinomial will factor, for sure, for sure. x, whatever this value is, plus 3 halves squared. And negative 14 plus 9 fourths. So I got to get a common denominator. That means I got to multiply this by 4. So 4 times 4 is going to be 16. Carry the 1, 4, 5. So negative 56. Negative 56 plus 9. So negative 56 is going to get smaller. So 47. Negative 47 over 4. Solving for x, I need to take a square root. So x plus 3 over 2 equals plus or minus negative. Inside the square root, it's going to come out as i. 47, that's a prime number. So I can't, take a, I can't simplify that over the square root of 4, which is 2. So 47 over 2i. Now I need to subtract 3 halves from both sides. Okay, final answer. x is equal to, so I'm going to write the answer a little different. They all have the same common denominator. So this is, uh, you know what, let's just do it like this. I was going to combine them, but it's fine. We could leave them separate. So this is going to be negative 3 halves plus or minus 
root 47 over 2i. It's basically just rewriting this left side. Okay, this one's a little trickier. 11, 7q squared plus 10q equals 2q squared plus 155. Okay, I need to move this q squared to the left by subtracting. So this is going to be 7 minus 2, which is 5. q squared plus 10q equals, I'm going to leave a space, 155. Okay, it's not 1, so I need to divide everything by 5, which is convenient, right? Five. Everything's divisible by 5. So I'm going to get q squared plus 10 divided by 5 is 2q equals, uh, 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 5, 15, 30, or 3 rather, so 31. Okay, take half of 2. That's going to be 1. That's my important value. I square it. 1 squared is 1. So I have to add 1 to both sides. This piece here, guaranteed to factor into Q, whatever this value is here, plus 1 squared, which equals 1. It doesn't equal 1. 31 plus 1, 32. <clears throat> okay, take a square root of both sides, plus or minus. So Q plus 1 equals, so 32, what is this going to be? 4 times 8, and then that 8 is 2 times 4. So I can bring out a pair, a pair of fours. So plus or minus four root two. Right, the fours can leave as one, the two is left over. So if I subtract one from both sides, I'm gonna get Q is equal to negative one plus or minus four root two. Okay, number 12, 3x squared plus x equals 2x minus 6. All right, I'm going to move the 2x over by subtracting. From the appropriate term, so this is going to be 3x squared, x minus 2x is going to be negative x equals negative 6. This isn't 1, right? The leading term is not 1, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So I'm going to get x squared, 1 third x, is equal to negative 2. I got to take half of negative 1 third, right? Because I got to take half of the b value. So when I take half of this, that's the same as multiplying by a half. It's negative. So top times top is negative 1. Bottom times bottom, negative 6. So this is the important value that I have to add to both sides. So it's negative, right? So negative 1, 6. Actually, it's not the value that I add to both sides. This is the important value that's going to be in the factor down below. When I square it, the only reason I know that is because this should never be negative. It should always be positive. This is going to be 1. So I can square the top, square the bottom. All right, this is a positive value. That's the number that I add to both sides. All right, if you add it up here and it's negative, catch yourself the way I did. So this is plus 136. All right. I got this piece right here is going to factor x 
whatever this number is here, negative, so minus 1 sixth squared, which is equal to negative 2 plus 36. So if I get a common denominator, I'm going to get 72 over 36, right? Because I got to multiply 2 by 36. So this is going to be 71, 36. Is it plus? No, it's negative. Okay, square root of both sides. So I get x minus 1 sixth, which is equal to, there's a negative inside, that's going to come out as an i. So plus or minus root 71, which is prime, over root 36, which is 6. Is 71 a prime number? I just said that. I feel like it's prime. And then the negative, so it's i. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to add 1, 6 to both sides. So final answer, x equals 1, 6 plus or minus root 71 over 6 i. Okay, point 0.1x squared minus x plus point 0.9 equals point 0.2x. So all these decimals, I got to multiply everything by 10, right? Because that'll move the decimal over. So if I multiply everything by 10, I'm going to get x squared, negative 10, right? Because I have to multiply everything by 10. This is going to be 9 which is going to be 2x, right? All I did was multiply everything by 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. This is 1. That's a good thing. However, this needs to move. I left the x out right there. So x squared minus 12x plus 9 is equal to 0. I have to subtract 9 from both sides. So minus 9. All right, this is definitely manageable. I want to take half of negative 12. That's going to be negative 6. Right? That's my important value. I square it. I get 36. I have to add 36 to both sides. Okay, this is going to be factored into x minus 6, right, because that's the value I got here, squared equals 36 minus 9, which is 27. Square root of both sides, so x minus 6 is equal to plus or minus, this is going to be 3 times 9. 9 is a perfect square. That can come out as a 3. So plus or minus 3, root 3. I add 6. So this is going to be 6, plus or minus 3, root 3. Final answer. Okay, number 14. 0.4v squared plus 0.7v equals 0.3v Minus 2. Again, multiply everything by 10. That's going to change all the decimals to whole numbers. I'm going to minus 3v. So v squared plus 4v equals negative 20. This is not 1. I have to divide everything by 4. So v squared, v, negative 5. This is nice. i got to take half of 1. So that's my, that's my important value. When I square it, I'm going to get 1 over 4. That's what I'm adding to both sides. It's moving right along. Okay. This piece is guaranteed 
to factor into V whatever I got here, plus 1 half squared, negative 5 plus a fourth is going to be 4 and 3 quarters. Right, negative 5, and I go to the right, 1 fourth, that gives me this. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3, 19. So negative 19 fourths, that, that's a negative value. All right, almost done. Take a square root of both sides. V plus 1 half is equal to plus or minus. This is a negative, so it comes out as I. So root 19 over root 4, which is 2. And my final answer, after I subtract 1 half to both sides, is going to be V minus 1 half plus or minus root 19 over 2i. And there it is. That's the completion of the homework. So good luck.